Hey guys, we're going to go ahead and service this rear brake here. I like to spray down the vehicle with a soapy water mix just out of muscle memory so I don't have to be worried about what brake fluid is in the bike or should be in the bike that wouldn't eat paint. Check with the manufacturer of the brake fluid to determine whether that's a caution or warning. You're going to see here, I'm going to go ahead and read the fill cap to determine what fluid should be in the motorcycle so I know as far as the rebuild and the caliper overhaul. Now I'm going to go ahead and break all the bolts loose since it's easier to use the bike to hold the caliper, especially if you're working alone. Holy smokes, guys. Watch. This is as honest as it gets, okay? Brake retaining bolts. That's holding the brake pads in. What happened on the last job of this? Of the day. Holy smokes, scary stuff, huh? This is something that's missing a lot, too, on the brake bleeder, uh, these caps. If you allow dirt and stuff to get in there, you try to go and bleed it, it's going to be a uh, pain in the butt. So you definitely want to make sure and keep these covered up. Once the brake line is removed, I just stick a paper towel through it so any fluid won't leak on any painted surfaces. Before I disassemble this, one other thing I want to talk about on this guy. See this little rubber plug here? Yeah. What that is, is a little rubber dampener or cushion for acceleration, deacceleration, because look at nothing, this isn't bolted to the swing arm. We're going through the swing arm pivot, and that means that this can move up and down. If you have a customer come in and they have a real hard clunk, like they're saying, hey, when I apply the rear brake, I got a clunking going on, it's probably that this rubber dampener is wore out. Or I'm gonna go ahead and get the pads out right now. It helps to push up on the pad to help the pin come out a little easier. Metal plate with the curled edges on it in there. Yeah. So that's a spring. And what's happening, I'm going to put a pin back through quick. You can see when we're around the brake pad with the pin in there, that's going to force the brake pad up against that metal backing plate. When you don't have the brake applied, that shim isn't in there, the anti-vibration uh, plate. Those pads are just sitting and doing this. Okay, here's a bad one. So you could see, look at that. I wanted to grab one of the exact same model so that you guys could really get that, that clear understanding on that. So you gotta check that out. So, well, when you get a big gouge in the pin, remember that brake pad has to slide back and forth across here? Well, as the pads wear, let's go ahead and stick one through here. As the pads wear, it's gonna move over to here, and move over to here, and move over to here. Well, when you apply the brake, it goes like this. If it's right in that point of the dip, the pad won't move back, so it stays drug against the rotor. That's the thing that'll really burn the brake pad up and burn up the rotor, is these pins. They're really an overlooked item. Always locate the minimum brake thickness specification in the service manual. I'm going to go ahead and check those threads I was worried about from those pins not being torqued. Always remove and clean the bleeder. That's something that's overlooked. I'm going to start to disassemble this thing now. Alright. There's that little shim. Okay. I want you to notice something here too. It's shaped differently. You just look in the camera. You see how that tab is down. It doesn't mean it was right. It just means that's how I took it apart. Let's take a look at this now and see if that makes sense. Okay, how, oops, goes like this. Can you see how when you push the, you know, pins in there, how it puts that pressure on there? Yeah. Okay, I want to take a look. If this brake pad is really dinged up right here, isn't that a really good indication that this might be, uh, have a divot or something in there? This is the same thing. If there's a divot across here, when you try to push on those pads, if it can't go smooth, it's going to cock. As you can see, these were very difficult to get out. I had to have two people hold the caliper while I used the uh, internal snap ring pliers to uh, basically pry them out of their bores there. It should not be that hard at all. Ready? Here's another one. Okay. That shouldn't be that tight. Okay, would that cause brake drag? Yeah, A rotor to blew up? Duplicate for the other side. So we got two seals in here. We're going to have a dust seal that we talked about and then we're going to have the actual hydraulic seal on there. Okay. Take a pick and go ahead and pry out the old dust seals and no rings. Be awful careful not to scratch anything. 
Then we're going to take a look and inspect the piston for any scratches or gouges. If any are present, replace. We're going to go through the process here to, to clean our caliper here. It's, we need to have our hydraulic side of this spotless clean, so we're going to look at a couple practices for that. Before I do that, when we took this caliper apart, you remember how we talked about how the brake pads are different here? You can see the different edges on here. This is kind of a good time where you can take a look at this if you're trying to figure out which pad goes where. Because I know the pistons are going to come up from here, which hit the back of the brake pad, as you can see, just for some proof here, the witness marks. Okay, So if I take a look at this, this fits in here nice and my holes line up. Okay, If I take the other one here, you'll notice it won't even work. What I like to do on these brake pins is take just some Scotch-Brite. And I don't really want to remove the powder coat. What I'm doing is just getting rid of all the brake dust because I want this thing just spotless clean. Then here's that anti-vibration spring. I gotta be careful, remember I don't wanna I don't wanna bend this, I don't wanna reshape it. So I like to do the same thing just to scotch bright it up here. Now I gotta make sure that the bores are just spotless clean where those dust seals and piston seals go. I wanna get any old o-ring out. I also wanna get any corrosion out of there. I use this pick but I am not going to gouge it. i got to be really careful. I clean up the surfaces here first with a red rag and then use a lint-free rag on final cleaning to not leave any debris behind. But get it good and cleaned up uh, thoroughly and throughout. You're going to use either the supplied piston grease or you're going to use the brake fluid you intend to use to lube up the O-rings and make sure they fully seat. On the outside bore here. Now ideally it should just drop in. We're going to find out. Okay, ready? Compared to yesterday? So. Yep, the hollow side always goes out. Okay. Alright, ready? Just the thumb pressure here. Notice how it wanted to cock on me? Yep. So we say stop, right? Yep. Okay. Alright, we're getting really good here. We got a couple of crossover. Here's a close-up of those crossover O-rings. All right, duplicate to the other half of the caliper using the same caution and procedures. You see a nice close-up here of that piston lube that Harley-Davidson supplies. This really makes the installation a breeze. Make sure you install that anti-vibration spring in the correct direction. You'll see here I'm just going to kiss these caliper bolts by hand uh, and I kind of lift it there and check to make sure that the crossover seals are not getting pinched or haven't fallen out of their grooves. Thanks. What I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and preload this pad, get the pin to start, then I'm going to preload the other one, get it through so it's just one side, and then work my way to the other side and duplicate the process. All right, as we wrap this up, you're going to see I'm just going to get everything literally hand tight for now. Now I'm going to actually test my work on the bench. I'm going to make sure that by putting some pressure in there that I will lock that disc up, and when I let the air off, the disc is free to move around. That tells me that those pistons are retracting the way they're supposed to. Now go ahead and torque those caliper crossover bolts 28 to 38 foot-pounds. And I like to do it in multiple steps. Torque the brake pad pin bolts 180 to 200 inch pounds on this model. Just in case you're ever just handing this back to the customer or you are you know may, might not get back to it for a few days, one thing I like to do is go ahead and make any notes. What this is saying is that it's torqued and ready to go back on the bike. They don't have to think about, oh, did I tighten those? Did I do what I needed to do? So it's just a great little practice that I use.